Virginia and our next guests know all the pain that can come with that. They're here to share how addiction and depression has impacted them, but to offer hope as well. Hope to be able to walk away and find freedom. Julia Kitchen and Cody Lineweaver are with 3CSU, the group behind Walk for Freedom. Julia, Cody, thank you so much You're for joining us today. Nice. Thanks for having us. Uh, Julia, let me, let me touch base with you first. How did addiction impact your life? Well, it's a long story. <laughs> um, I was actually in a relationship with someone, um, and we were going to get married. It was going towards that. Um, and he got kind of caught up with the wrong people, as you may know. When yeah. you hang out with the wrong people, you kind of become like them sometimes. Um, and so... Um, I kind of found out that he had gotten into drug addiction and it was very hard to find that out um, and he struggled with it for a few months and I just remember feeling so confused about it like you know because you can't really get out of it you know what I mean mm -hmm. um, and it's very hard and so I came to a point where um, one day he wanted to kind of because you know you don't want you don't want to do that yeah. um, and so he tried to quit cold turkey I just remember holding him and him shaking and I was only, you know, I was young, so I had to grow up really quick in that day, and I just felt, you know, like I had to kind of take care of him. Um, and so a few months later, um, we were just hanging out. It was a normal night, and he went to the bathroom, and I just remember having like a kind of a bad feeling, um, and I waited a long time and a long time, and I went to go check on him, and that night I actually had to find him passed away already in the bathroom, mm -hmm. and I just felt so much, you know, in that moment, I just felt, you know, like the world came crashing down on me, kind of. Um, you said you were young. How old were you? I was only 18, so I was still a little baby. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> um, and so I just felt, felt like I had to grow up really quick, kind of. Um, and I went through a depression. I went through all the feelings of it being my fault. I went through all the feelings of, you know, not wanting to live anymore. Mm -hmm. um, and, yeah, so. So, that's what I so through all that, through all the, the, the depression and not wanting to go on, what got you through that? The only thing that got me through was really the blood of Jesus and his um, word in my life and hanging around the right people um, because if I could have hung around people who were also sad and also, you know, right. um, and I would have stayed in that. But by hanging around people who are going to lift me up and were going to, you know, push me to move on and to move forward and to grow, that's really what um, saved my life and it was only because of Jesus um, in my life. <laughs> now, Cody, your personal struggle was with depression. Yeah. Tell us your story. Well, um, my story really starts when I was very young, uh, a lot younger than 18. Um, I was seven years old and my dad, he committed suicide. <laughs> he was um, born with a clinical type of depression, uh, one that's from you know, chemical imbalance in the brain. And, um, you know, when I, when I lost him at seven, it, you know, it, it, it completely destroyed my world. And, you know, I, I didn't have much to look forward to and it made me not trust people. And I, I developed depression my own self and just became very bitter. And it wasn't until many years later, um, <clears throat> I first came uh, to, to 3C, and that's the church I go to now, and, and that's when I was introduced to, you know, what Jesus did on the cross and, and how he, you know, he, he died on there so I could be set free right. and find freedom. And that's really what connected with me. And it was like Julia talked about being connected with people who, you know, who would lift me up and, and help me through that stuff because at that place when you've lost someone so close to you and, you know, through something that's, that's so hard to even process at that young age, it, you, you know, you, you're, you're broken mm -hmm. and, you know, you need something to heal you. And that's, you know, Jesus was the only thing that could do it. Something bigger than you. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Mm -hmm. So you found your freedom through God. Yeah. Yep. And you've got a happy ending as well. Yeah, I'm married now to the best guy ever. <laughs> <laughs> and now my last name's Kitchen, which is pretty funny. <laughs> oh, that's beautiful, Look at that. obviously, on your wedding day. Well, congratulations. All right, let's talk a little bit about Walk for Freedom. What is it? Well, the, the Walk for Freedom, um, it's a walk that we're going to have this Saturday. Um, we're having registrations from 12 to 1 outside of Holloway Hall yeah, at the Salisbury University campus. And we're going to be walking around the campus um, near Route 13. And then we're going to be ending at the Wicomico building, having a service. And the walk really, um, what it's about, it's not just about awareness um, that you can have freedom, but it's about getting that freedom. You know, because 
uh, we're a collective of people who have been through a multitude of things. You know, even between me and Julie, you see addiction, you see depression, you see suicide, um, you see hopelessness, and you know, really, what Walk for Freedom is about is is getting to that freedom. Um, not just raising awareness, but but literally walking to it. And then during that service, we're we're having uh, powerful speakers from all over Delmarva coming and sharing, you know, their story and how they obtain that freedom. And we're really believing for God to set people free that day from whatever it is that's holding them back from that freedom that we know that God has for everyone. Julie, let me ask you: um, Addiction really affected your life personally, but not so much. It's not that you were addicted, but right. you were affected personally. What would you tell someone? who is in the same position now that you were. Mm -hmm. I'd probably say that um, there's hope in that. There's, because people feel like it's the end, you know what I mean? Like, they're kind of stuck in it. And I feel like some people feel like there's no way out, you know, because addiction, they call it a disease, you know, all that kind of thing. Right. Um, but there's really a hope to get out of it and you don't have to stay there. Yeah. And even if people call you, you know, say, you're, that's that guy who's addicted, that's that guy who is suicidal, whatever it might be. Um, you don't have to ha hold that identity on you. You can change it. So that's what I would say. I there is hope. How yeah. about you, Cody? A message you would give to others who may be in the situation you were in? Yeah, is um, to, to open up um, and to connect with people because there is hope. And a lot of times when you're that broken down or when you've, you know, what I went through when I lost someone, the closest person to me, and it made me, you know, very reserved. And it wasn't it was until I opened up and allowed someone else to come into my life and to kind of give me that hand helping me up. Um, you know, I, I never saw the hope before. Mm -hmm. It took someone else to, to reveal it to me. You know, so I would, I would tell them to, you know, open up and to allow the people to help them become free because it's there. You know, there's, there's hope. Julia, Cody, thank you, thank you so much for sharing your stories with us. And for more information about Walk for Freedom and how you can participate, just visit DelmarvaLife.com.